Good morning, all you gamers. Okay then. I have something very special. In honor of the um, new Spyro Grand Prix that's coming up, I thought I'd do a little honors video showing how far I've come since I had given up on that Crash the Let's Play again, Crash taking a long, long hiatus hey guys. from the Spyro Let's Play. And believe you and me, I kind of needed that long hiatus. That long, 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 very long hiatus. And I thought it'd only be fair to look back at some of the things that I did earlier on in some of the videos. So anyway. Here I am going through the menus of options. And believe me, back when this Let's Play was filmed, the trailer if you can already guess, was well, the Spyro Reunited Trilogy because that was the game coming out at the time. I didn't show the whole trailer because of, uh, you know, copyright issues and all that, but still, at least I gave viewers a chance to see Spyro, which was pretty awesome. Anyway, I, I would have done Crash 2 or Crash 3 if I was able to finish Crash 1, which, as well, you know how all that turned out. Turned out um, pretty lame, in my opinion, to be honest. Yeah, it was, it was pretty lame back then. And to be honest, this first video, I thought it was a good idea to showcase the entire game with a cheap VHS feel to make it feel like you were actually playing the game in an old school PlayStation or something. Well, that didn't go over so well, Brandon. Anyhow, here you see Dr. Neocortex and he is being the international dick that he is. And strangely enough, why there are still no subtitles in the Crash Bandicoot cutscenes, I have no idea. Even though, that's right, even though the Spyro series has already had subtitles since um, 1.4, I think was the update, 1.3, the update of Spyro having subtitles. Well, forgive me if I don't know my um, update numbers very well, but still. It had some remarkably, remarkably, Activision had some remarkably, remarkably skewed prospects. They thought that not adding subtitles would add to the feel of the game, when in fact not adding subtitles would have been doing a disservice to gamers who were hard of hearing or deaf or something like that. And this, well, that get you kind of of an awkward look. In the um, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel thing, before it got all extremely, well, I, for lack of a better word, I'm going to call them dickish on their um, need to have predatory season pass style content and the fact that the that they monetize the Wumpa coins. 
And I don't think that was all Activision's fault. I think Minox is partly to blame for going along with Activision wanting to monetize the content, even though Minox did not want it monetized. Yeah, that's right. They were forced to monetize the Wumpa Coins. And can you believe that none of us saw that coming? So here I am fumbling around. Something turtle. Which, if you can believe it, was actually this actually paved the way for my um, rage quit when it comes to uh, native fortress. Anyhow. So he comes to the fork in the road and we have to take the left fork. And considering how calm I was uh, before that, you can you can kind of see where this I'm coming from. I picked kind of a weird um, stop screen to use for that uh, particular first episode. If you take the left path, you'll probably find some crates. I didn't know back then that you could um, edit filters and whatnot. Come on, just give my child like brain something to learn, would you? Now that it's that, now that we got all that cleared up, anyhow, we'll continue on with the video. Once play was pressed on the VCR, the video resumed as you would expect. At least that's my and unbelievably, and I didn't know this at the time when of, of the video's release, there were these white squares in the area. The white squares mean you had to hit some sort of switch. Thankfully, Brandon knew that and brought it to my attention. So with that in mind, I carefully, carefully walked down the area and then walked back up the right fork after jumping over that chasm there and clicking on the little switch there. And this took me I'm not sure how many tries, but it took me a pretty decent amount of tries to get through, if you can believe it. Now when you have, whenever you see those little lines and distortion going on, that means I'm fast forwarding through the video rather than it being a constant effect. like like it was back then. Really? You really had to do that. And this is where I started fast forwarding to things. And yes, it made sense for me to fast forward through those deaths, because... Because really, I find that having to go through all those deaths was just plain unnecessary. And I mean, you wouldn't believe how it's um, how I could not have availed the um, easy to fast forward. Well, I made it through, but I missed a few crates along the way. Twelve of them, to be precise. And yeah, this would pave the way for later bouts of anger to be involved. Whatever the tower popping up could have waited until the very end. 
when I when I finally finish whatever was going on here because I wanted to wait until I completed all the islands first before getting to the good stuff Okay, and this is, and after you've completed a stage in Crash Bandicoot, you're given the option of a time trial. Which I think I availed myself of that option, I think, only once. Yeah. That's a surprise and a half. And honoring that little tidbit there, could could win you some favor points with me, Brandon. You might never know. You might never know whether I'm gonna be nice and friendly like I usually am, or if I'm gonna be a real asshole. It depends on it depends on my mood. Really. Now, you know I can't do like a full, full on new episode of um, Crash Bandicoot or Spyro at the moment. Possibly for fear of it getting monetized, demonetized and whatnot. And even though I don't use mon monetization or anything, We are in the age where anything, and yes, I do mean anything, can be demonetized nowadays. And really, no one really has any say in the matter. So, with that, And, and this was very awkward, mind you. This was kind of the awkward first video that you released to the public with the weird and wacky filters. And the floaty physics make certain things that were possible in the original Crash Bandicoot more, more, more than difficult. In fact, I'd wager them to be outright impossible. Yes. And Native Fortress was that impossible moment where I just completely gave up on the series. That was the point where I said, enough. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I didn't want to do it anymore. That's it. It's over. But thankfully, you're getting a look at the very first episodes of the series and not what would come later. So now that that's got Crash out of the way, let's move on to Spiral the Dragon. Which I will admit is pretty awesome. And, as a bit of early installment weirdness, this first episode of the playthrough did not even have credits. It did not have credits. No. It had a, um, just a little outro screen and a generic pre-chosen little stinger clip. Now up next is the spyro bit of the, um, honor assessment. And grab your popcorn, folks, because this one's going to be long. And I mean it, long. This is where I started. This was where... This was the part where I began titling in my episodes. And you notice I used the PlayStation 3 thing to show what I was going to say there? 
And they even put a no mic audio thing down at the the bottom to tell that my mic was turned off. Yeah, nowadays I've got this little buddy as a microphone. Granted, it's not exactly what I would call a stellar microphone or a or the best microphone I could get. Sure, I could get like a, like a, like a high-end headset mic and be done with it, and then I could continue recording Let's Play through that, but still, I decided to record this little video for you guys, because I like you all, and because it's it's kind of worth it to look back at old content and see how far you've come. Anyway, I could either pick Spyro 1, Spyro 2, or Spyro 3. All three of those were great, 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 great games. And I don't see what all the complaints are about with the, um, with all the stuff going on. I did a little transition there to um, get back to the um, full blown mic audio there. But still, those first couple of clips I did did not work well. I gotta say, it did not go well. <coughs> Sorry about that. And yes, this was the very first episode of Spyro at the time, believe it or not. And I'm surprised it turned out as good as it did. No doubt about that. Because without that, I would have been shocked. Shock to the very core, no Okay, nowadays they're using autosave where back then you you could use the fairies to autosave. You know what? They should bring that feature back where where you could insert a memory card into the PS4 and then have it saved to you that way. And certain games use the memory card for certain features, like, you know Psycho Mantis? He was able to read your memory card and determine what games you were playing and how long you've been playing them. In the PS1 version, he would mention Konami games, like, for instance, A, or or some sort of other games. Or he would probably make a generic comment about what type of games you liked. Now this felt kind of awkward hearing the um the uh, first games cutscene done by Tom Kenny. As you all know, Tom Kinney is the voice of Spongebob. And as we all know, Jake from My Gym Partners a Monkey. But that, to be honest, wasn't his best work. Anyway, about the game. The level of detail feels so real in this game. And I really do mean that. It feels incredibly real. And prob I'm probably just rambling on at this point, trying to get the uh, get the details of the game across. And here I rotated the camera a little bit to give a little sense of the world building and the environment. And I even demonstrated that you could burn the grass in the game. I think you could do that with the original game as well, but still. Not my place to say anything.
Anyway, this guy tells you you need to find ten dragons right at the very beginning. And the reason I didn't show the balloonist in the artisan world is because this guy gave you the goal objective rather quickly and you're able to find ten dragons rather quickly so you probably won't get an opportunity to um, get the uh, get the uh, failure quote for the uh, balloonist. Anyway, these these options you saw here were back in the days when subtitles weren't even implemented yet. Nowadays you'll see such an option, but back then, <laughs> back then it was mind blowing just to even get this game. Subtitles or no subtitles. <coughs> and I bet they managed to get the original tracks as well. And I like that they managed to get the original tracks as well. And considering it's a very big game. There are lots of things that, that could go wrong with this game. For instance. Sparks might not be, might not, might refuse to pick a gym, pick a gym up for you, even though it's clearly right in front of him. <sighs> Anyhow. There is actually a bonus world in the artisan level called Sunny Flights. And believe me. The flights levels can go themselves. Trust me on that one. You are going to have a very, very bad time with that. Thankfully, they even give the sound options, and the style of music would be pretty good. The reignited one is probably the only one to have the dynamic music option, but knowing me, if you know me, I prefer the original music option because it sounds, well, it just sounds, well, better. I even did a commentary on this video a while back, but probably, that's probably outdated by now, so. If you can get where I'm coming from, to be honest. The first episode of Crash and the first episode of Spyro alone clock in at just a little over 60 minutes. Which is why this commentary may not be up to the full potential that you see here. So with that in mind, I will try to give you the most commentary I can of the out of the two. So. At times, I needed help with um, Spyro or Crash or in some other way. He's like the damn teacher. And in proverbially, when, as they've seen, said, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. I didn't. I didn't know I had acquired a skill point until it showed up, popped up in a subtitle there. Anywho, I'm guessing this was some sort of maze thing going on. Now, in order to face off against Toasty, you have to re you have to complete one of the other artisan worlds. It doesn't matter which one, 
just as long as you complete them. And ironically though, in this version, the bonus world is the fourth world, and the boss is the last one. No. No. If you've ever played the Japanese version of Spyro 1, you see 1-1, one, 1-2, one, 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 with the bot with the boss level is the fourth one and the fly levels being the fifth one. That's the pattern I try to follow here. And I mean that in a big way. I understand they gave the dragons different designs to appeal to their personalities, but Me being an old dinosaur, I prefer the PlayStation 1 version, to be honest. This was a relatively big game. And a lot has changed since then. If you could believe it. And I, and I really do mean that. A lot has changed since this game's, since the game, and, I, and by that I mean the original game's inception. Now, the Spyro 3 I have you know, on the PS3 is based on, on the glitchy version of Spyro 3, not the, um, greatest hits release that Brandon has. Cause let's be honest, sometimes the greatest hits releases can have bug fixes and whatnot, as, is, as was the case with Spyro. And to be honest, all the releases you see in the uh, the uh, PlayStation Store on the PS3 of the PS1 games are based on the original versions of the games. For example, with like I mentioned earlier with Spyro 3, there was a ver the game was rushed to release in time for the year 2000, and year 2000 was literally the year of the dragon. So the title actually made sense since since the year 2000 in the Chinese Zodiac is literally the year of the dragon. And in Spiral 3, well, at least the original Spiral 3, I'm not so sure about the Greatest Hits version, Fireworks Factory had a whole lot of references. It was in the title screen, the game over screen, has a level in the original game, as well as its own music track, and has since reappeared in a remake. I hope I get to play it. If not it, one of the others. Anyhow, We have almost reached the halfway mark. Gonna double check something. Ooh, 115. I'll continue commenting through this next bit, then I'll, then I'll go and get some lunch. Okay, so here we have Stone Hill. 
think are optional. Mind you. And you're seeing this at the halfway mark of this video I edited together. Yep. And Stonehill looks as awesome as it did in the original low polygon version of the game. I still prefer the original version to be honest. So who is calling? All right. See, back when YouTube allowed you to broadcast who you really were, we had no fear. We could do, we could broadcast whatever. We could even broadcast video games and it would still make us who we are. But nowadays, do we even dare? Do we risk getting demonetized and all that crap and whatnot. Nowadays, sometimes it's not even worth it to broadcast yourself to YouTube. Anyhow, after falling into this well, yep. and I knew it. <coughs> there were I don't know about you, but I'm pretty hungry. Time for a break. His color indicates his power. Hmm. When he eats butterflies, fruit cheese and chips. Strong. I love it. That's exactly what I said earlier. Anyway, back to the commentary. When Sparks eats butterflies, he um, gains a point Or rather, the honors commentary. My bad. So anyway... Running through, um... Stone Hill. When you get it, made you her rather really fun romping the frog statues, around the... Or be around the hole. You get an extra life. Countryside. I know I'm kind of repeating myself. Which is actually pretty good, you know. Still. It's important to know. And that and getting the gems. Alright. That works out well too. Getting gems. Anyway, <coughs> here's where we rescue the um, timekeeper, who tells us about extra lies, and believe me, you're going to need all the extra lives you can get in this game. <laughs> Sometimes I'll run into trouble. Admittedly. Wow. This is just... Wow. Gilda. Spy 
Pharaoh, my friend. How about a hint on gliding? You bet. And I gotta say, this game is amazing. And try pressing the action button to drop down mid-flight. Although, thanks to Activision lying about not putting in, in uh, purchases. For the longest glide, press the X button. And I have reason to blame Beanox for going along with this lie as well. To cover, I think it was. I might need Why to would you do this? Again. How? <coughs> I'm not sure. Sorry. How on earth could you do this to your customers, Activision? Think this might go on the switch, we treated you well. Now, we were loyal to you. For some reason. We were some of the best clients you'll ever have. Now, we're nothing if not disappointed and enraged. That's right, I said it. Outright enraged. Let's see what I have so far. So I need to free one more dragon in... Collect the dragon. And yes, this is the part where I had to ask for help on this one. And again, no shame in asking for help though. <laughs> That's a pretty cool fencing system. And trust me, I like this is them. all for one lousy skill point. It Mind the you. Concept of invisible walls by having those Though, I didn't know about the option to ask my friend Brandon for help until, I think, sometime later on. That's pretty cool. I could be wrong, though. Okay. You know what would make more sense Let's get all the gems, with the spiral you make and all? Reuse the code when it comes to finding your gems. After you free have him earn, the have gems, Sparks earn the gem radar in the second game, the and then, <clears throat> and only then, Are you allowed to use the gym <laughs> radar? Oh, Spyro. Because having it from the beginning Why makes no sense. Story? Come on, they're pretty good. Also, in the original game, there were certain characters, like the fairies, who were not voiced. Now, it seems everybody has voice. Yeah. Even the freaking balloonist has a voice. Which, if you look at it, makes no sense. Three, if you count the ones with the key. A wooden chest, which you can either charge or flame. And a silver chest. Everybody having voices isn't a bad thing, no. You can only charge. And I can definitely appreciate some good voice acting here and there. But. When your game gets and buggy, when you have a game as big as Spiral the, the Spiral the Dragon series, you're bound to run into some bugs and glitches anytime you play. For such an ambitious game, those little bugs and glitches can add up and lead to an overall frustrating experience. Gotta make sure that's done. With that in mind, oh, you wrong. can see wrong. Wrong way. why I'm I made kidding. people suffer oh. through this long trek of a quest to that way. find that that one damn flower. Admittedly, this world is a bit of a time monster when it comes And yeah, to I, I, I should have fast forwarded through this. But like I said, through some of the parts of this segment. Don't get me wrong. 
to, I mean, they're just there to replay that. And I didn't even use any filters you know, to cry out loud. You actually need to 100% collect are the, um... Unlike in the crashed one where I used the VCR one quite judiciously. How did I miss one? You know how I got the VCR sounds? I'll tell you. It was my Panasonic VCR, which is a relatively cool VCR, to tell you the truth. That one part was the least amount of fast forwarding I did, and, and then the next part. Alright. <coughs> Came close to getting a sneeze there. Anyway, back on track. Man, I'll admit, that trick for those last few gems, and for that one damn flower, was really trying on my patience. I will admit it, yeah, it was. See that dragon egg? And out yes, here. those blue egg thieves can go die in the ninth circle of hell. Oh, hold on. I don't know how I got enough to survive, but still. <sighs> yes! Got the dragon egg. So is that fit. Whew. <coughs> Sorry about that. How'd I miss the treasure chest? I forgot I left my phone in the bathroom. I guess this one was pretty easy to miss. So yeah, I apologize for that. Who am I to complain? I'm missing a treasure chest. Anyhow. Back on track. This took quite a while to find the flower, believe it or not. Even though I had, I think, that last one gem I'm missing, unless, unless I'm misreading things, I might have had all 200 gems at some point. But there was this one lousy skill point I couldn't get out of my head. Anyhow. Now where'd they put those eight gems, I wonder? It was because of that I needed to contact Brandon for help. And an enemy? We'll see why a little later. Am I? Something. And this may take a while. I will admit, I did a little bit of fast forwarding there. Just to warn you, and a heads up, this might take more than one video. And trust me, Brandon, I will get to the um, so Crash and Spyro episodes sometime in a bit. I may retract that. But the Crash episode will probably be a one off episode, and we'll, it will be me cursing up the blue streak about. Native fortress and how how raisingly hard it is. In the spiral moon, we'll probably be of the other two spiral one of the other two spiral sequels. I somehow need a breather after those. Um, Moments. There's this one gym hidden okay. right behind. How'd I miss that? Where were we? Oh, yes. The castle. Once again, 
no use complaining since the gym is kind of easy to miss, so. This may take a bit. Now, where are those last three, huh? So, just be patient. Find those last three gyms and I will be done with this level. I will admit I should probably have just divided them into two parts. They should be around here somewhere. And it would have done better that way, so. But. As it, might, as it stands, probably too late to make amends, I guess. All right. And we all have to suffer through it. Ooh. Anyhow. You've got to be kidding me. How easy. Holy... Mother of the Lord's prayer, did I not notice that? And that reminds me. I've, Maybe I've been exploring speech multiple speech. times and going to different places I've been already. And so, as you can see... I've already done those, so... I'm pretty much oh, up to creep with a paddle. Oh, here they are. No Although it would have made sense to use some there. transitions in there. I didn't think to do so at the time, so... Yeah. Now I need to find the exit. Believe me when I say... That's things didn't way. work out so hot. Anyhow, what's next? The uh, no, again, that's the wrong way. Oh, I've been running through area after area. Yeah, I suffered through this stone hill mountain as much as you guys did. So, all right. Believe me, you all are going to have to suffer along with me, so. Man. I can't believe it wasn't until episode 4 that I decided to ask for a hell of a lot of help. And believe me, I needed that help. Why do I keep paying these guys and they have no no more gems to give? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'll try one more world. Good God. And I choose to go to Dark Hollow next, which is um another interesting choice I might add. So, now what do you do? Wow, you can, you can control spiral flight while it's on the loading screen. Oh yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool That's a little loop-de-loop -loop thing that that guy does. Right off the bat, we got a... Give it I am. Close to approaching the end of the video, or at least almost to the um, 16 minute mark that this thing allows you to record. How many gems? 100 gems. I think I'm about 50 minutes into the 16 minute mark allowed, 
so. With my last 10 minutes, I'm gonna say that Spyro and Crash are both awesome entities. And in, in, these properties came from Activision pretty much before they started, Activision started being greedy scumbags. And yes, I will state for the record that I once gave them credit for making the games. Once! Nowadays, a credit to Activision for making the game is like a taint on the reputation of gamers. Wait a second. And no, I don't mean the sexual kind of taint. Also add an extra life. I mean the taint of darkness. That is pretty cool. Anyhow. Now you have three ways to add an extra life. Stupid I'm camera? Thinking about one of them. Then again, by collecting one, so by collecting one extra life from the clam. This is gonna take a while. Blaming on a thing, mind you. Or collecting enough pearls, you get an extra. And life. it's not. That's pretty cool. Just because of some annoying BS. Oh, oh, oh. Though I'm willing to expand upon that. Seriously. You've got to be kidding. Okay then. There you go. I mean these guys have some pretty awesome ways, you know? I mean, you're going out of your way to rescue these guys. Got more gems. All right. So we are waiting and we're waiting, and we're charging through the area, looking for different things. So, that way we don't get lost or annoyed as heck, so to say. I may have to speed up the stinger and the, the outro to get it down to like an hour. That's about as long as this game allows, isn't it? Man, that is pretty cool. And could you believe it? I've already found the ten dragons needed. That was pretty awesome in my And here I go into a little hidden area. More on that in a moment. This guy's hard as frontal shell is going down. And Spyro's getting some gems. Oh yes, I managed to take advantage of a charge glitch there, which is quite amazing. Because in this game, sometimes you're able to charge through those shielded orcs and no problem. Back then, you would not have been able to do that without getting hurt. But I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Spyro, 
want to know a secret? Anyhow. Use the action button when you want to zoom in and look around. Call your secret safe with me. The credits? I gave. Got it. We're from way back before. Before I even found out about Activision's so called. Now what? So called lie. Now, if you remember why Brandon said that Beanox did not want monetary transactions, but but Activision snuck them in when they weren't looking. That's quite understandable. I think I remember Beanox saying to the effect of, "You are not going to put in monetary transactions, are you?" And Ooh, in Activision, life. saying, I'm already making good progress. No, we're actually not. Which is kind of what the game industry code is like thinking. In reality, it was no, but actually, yes. Got 90 gems, so 10 more and Anyhow. After we get through to the um, chest there, long time coming, you find some gems. Yes. I got the whole level completed, and the level so now completed. we have reached its end. Hopefully, things were really good on this trip back to memory lane. And I'm pretty sure most of you all like that memory, memory lane trip. Anyhow. There's only two minutes left in this video, so I'm going to be rather quick here. All right. Activision. You were a great company when you made Spyro Ignited Trilogy. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy yeah. and Crash Team Racing. At least until you did up with your in a purchases. Ark. Let's see. One more level. Anywho, I, I hope that when people play your games, they you do not purchase any Wumpa coins. I've seen well, gamers say that here. they're gonna rape Activision's if you like what you saw, like business model by like not purchasing really any Wumpa coins. And good on them. I gotta say, it, good on them. So, whew. To say there's also a hidden, hidden flight level. We got out of the way in the last we'll minute. I so want to thank you all for watching this honors video. Sure, if you like what you've seen, anyway, like, comment, and subscribe. Watching episode and of if you want to see more Spyro honors Spyro videos Spyro. like this, hit that notification bell. And it really, game. really Spyro helps. Now. Oh, and you and gotta take a look at the credits too. I would show up that trophy the credits of the, the video I sent well, you here were, here's the dang thing. were made long before Looks pretty awesome, doesn't it? I found out about Activision's scummy business fact practices. That Light My Fire anyway, was incredible this is the gamer nerd. to be considered as Thank an achievement. Thank you all for watching, yes. and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, everybody. A good game.